I remember closing that book and I just remember just tears just streaming down my face. And all I could, the only thing I could say or think was it's true. It's, it's true. It's all true. Well, my name is Brad Powell. I am a husband, a father, a youth sports coach, and veterinarian in Gillette, Wyoming. And this is my story. I, I grew up in a very religious family. Um, we were, our lives, everything in our lives centered around church. Um, if the doors were open, we were there because um, our religion was based upon fear, uh, fear of, number one, just going to hell. I mean, that was big enough. Uh, we were afraid of going to hell, and we were afraid of not going to church because we were afraid of going to hell. We were afraid of being outside that group because if you were outside that group, you were going to hell. And, that, and that's what I knew, what, that's what church was. That's what God was, was this list of things that you couldn't do. Um, and so I remember um, very vividly, um, it was, I was in fourth grade, it was, it was a Wednesday night, I had gone to bed and I laid there and I had this dream I had this dream that that I was in hell, that the devil was right there and the flames were coming up and I I was I, I didn't make it, you know. So literally I I got up out of my bed, went to my parents' room, woke them up, and it's probably nine, nine thirty at night, and told them about this dream. And I just remember immediately my father reached over to the phone and it was like he was dialing the Batman hotline as he called the preacher right away. Yep, yep, yep. And next thing I know, we're in the car. Because I had reached my moment of uh, uh, re responsibility. I would reached my moment. I knew the truth now. So fourth grade, I wake my brother up, wake my sister up. I'm in my pajamas. We're, we're going to the church. And I'm literally, I, I'm, I'm praying the whole way that my dad doesn't have a car wreck. Because if he does... And we, and we die, I'm in hell because I didn't get in the water. Um, so we get to the church, and I remember very vividly the, the, the only light was there in the baptistry that was black. It was just you know darkness out in, where, in the sanctuary. And the preacher was there, my dad was there, and my sister, my brother, my mom. So we get in there into the baptistry, and I'm nervous and shaking because I know as soon as I go under and come up, everything's going to be different. Everything's going to change. And my dad wanted to baptize me. And so he, we got into the baptistry, and I was nervous and shaking, and the, the, the preacher told him what to say, and he got ready, and he said everything, and I go under the water, and I come up, and I'm just, you know, going to hear angels or trumpets or something and this is what I heard the preacher said um, Billy my dad's name you're gonna have to do it again because you didn't go all the way under <laughs> and that was my that was my salvation that was it you know and I was so disappointed I just remember every day ending the same way because every day I would get to the end of the day and um, I would have to remember all the things that I did wrong and make sure that I prayed and I asked God for, to forgive me because if I died, even though I was baptized, which obviously didn't mean anything, even though I was supposedly saved, and we didn't even use that word saved. I became a Christian, but I wasn't saved. We never used that word. If I died in my sleep and I forgot to ask for forgiveness for telling that lie that I, and something happened, you know, I was going to go to hell. So every day ended that way 
of remembering how I failed. And every day started the same way of, man, I'm gonna, today I'm gonna do it. You know, today I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna fail today. I'm gonna do everything right. Um, well, as things often do, uh, things changed when a, a young lady came on the scene, um, a young lady named Melissa. Uh, we began dating when we were in juniors in high school and on into our senior year. It uh, became pretty serious to the point where we spent most time together. We'll fast forward from that. We eventually uh, went to college. We eventually got married. Uh, the same uh, Melissa that I went to fourth grade with. And so now we're married, and, and we have our first child, Colton. And, the, and, and now I have two souls, not only my own soul to worry about, but I've got these two souls to get to heaven. And I just remember that weight of responsibility. How am I going to do this? How am I going to get them there? So, of course, we, I, all I knew was to get to the right church, get them going, get them in. Um, and, of course, you know, poor Melissa, she's, she's a believer, you know, the Holy Spirit. And she's just so gracious. There were times where she stood her ground and, you know, this is, we would move to a new town or uh, she would say, let's try a different church. And, of course, no way. Um, and I remember trying to figure out how to convert her, how to get her to believe the right way. Um, and I, I remember um, she would go to sleep at night, and I would find her Bible, and I would go into the closet, make sure she was asleep, and I'd turn on the light in the closet, and I would flip through her pages and find the things that she'd underline, like, like Ephesians 2, 8, 9. And I would read it and try to think about how I could convince her how wrong she was. You know, this grace that she talked about and being saved. And, um, and so I spent a lot of nights in the closet trying to figure out how to convince her that she was wrong. We ended up through, now I know God's intervening or, or the way things happen. We ended up, the job that I had in Texas ended and I needed a new place to go. And we ended up, in all, of all places, in, in Gillette, Wyoming. And Gillette, Wyoming is 12 to 1,400 miles away from home. And no one could see where we were going to church. And uh, an opportunity arose, and somehow we ended up at a little church in Gillette. Um, walked through the door, and a, a guy named Pastor Bill greeted us and invited us and to start a study on the Book of Romans. And we ended up, after uh, some time, uh, Hearing about this seminar, this uh, um, this meeting in Olds, Alberta, Canada. Never didn't have any idea where that was. Didn't know all the provinces or anything, but it sounded like a great time and a road trip with some guys. And so uh, we loaded up in a van and headed north, and and ended up at a, a good seed seminar in Olds, Alberta, Canada. I remember uh, getting to Olds and and uh, ending up in this little church. Uh, we were having the, the seminar put on by Good Seed, and uh, we came and and got our materials. We got a, a book that we were gonna to use to go through. Uh, we ended up in a little a little room of the church, I think off the kitchen, I believe, and um, opened it up and met uh, a guy named Paul Humphreys, who was gonna be our instructor and and take us through teaching us the highlights of how to use this book and some some visual aids to then how to clearly present the gospel. And so as we opened up that book, and, and it was uh, starting from, from, from Genesis, starting from the very first pages of Scripture, and, and giving, uh, seeing how the whole Bible, every story, and the stories that I knew, the stories that I knew, grew up with of, of um, Noah and the ark, and, and, and the, the children of Israel, and Moses, and, and all the things that happened. I knew the stories, and I knew about the cross, but I didn't see how they connected at all. I didn't see that the whole point, the whole story of the story is the, is the cross and the gospel. And so as we sat there each day, uh, we would get to the end of the day and I would just be wanting to read ahead and, and get to the next part. And God began to work and, and, and really open my eyes a little at a time to the truth of how it all weaved together. Um, 
and uh, we would go to the hotel each evening and come back and I was reading ahead and and just excited to see what was what was around the corner and how this was going to tie together and um, I remember getting to the end of that seminar getting to the to the last page as we closed the book and and Paul telling us you know you're going to bring whoever you're going through this with to this point to this point of of uh, making a choice making a decision and I remember closing that book and I just remember just tears just streaming down my face and all I could the only thing I could say or think was it's true it's it's true it's all true and in that moment I just grabbed on to grace and I grabbed on to the truth of the gospel and the good news of the gospel and, and realized that what I what I thought I knew and, and, and what wasn't good news now with with the truth um, was, was real and, and we, we had we, we talked about these four uh, principles these four fundamentals irreducible minimums I think Paul said um, and that was that uh, God is a holy God um, that we are helpless sinners um, that Christ provided a sufficient substitute. And then there was a personal choice, a personal faith that took place at the end of that. And, and so as we went back to the hotel room, I was telling Bill, man, this is great. This grace is just incredible. I just can't, it, it's just so overwhelming. And I, I, I just couldn't, it just seemed, it was unbelievable. It was, it was too good to be true, but it was. Uh, and, and I prayed that night that, that God would, uh, that feeling of awe, uh, of this, uh, this overwhelming uh, grace, that I would, wouldn't ever lose that, that it would never get old, that it would never change. And, and it hasn't. Um, um, we got up next morning and we, we were given the task of writing out what we had learned to, to try to, hey, Paul wanted to make sure that we could clearly present those irreducible minimums. And I remember my hand couldn't go fast enough. I was, you know, sometimes you're writing and your mind's this far ahead of how, how fast your hand can go because I knew it. I knew it. Um, and everything changed. Everything changed. Well, the, uh, the seminar ended. And we, of course, had a long journey home. Uh, we all, these guys, uh, piled back in the van. And uh, I'm not sure, um, again, they, they come to learn about this book and this tool, and I experienced something very different. Um, and I was very grateful. Um, uh, as we drove home and, and ended up having to try to get back for worship services the next Sunday morning, we ended up driving through the night and all taking turns of, of getting there. And I mean, I was just excited. I was excited and, and couldn't wait to get home. I couldn't wait to tell my family. I couldn't wait to tell you know, anyone who would listen about what I knew um, because the the gospel was finally good news. It was it was good to know, and I wanted to share it. Uh, I remember driving in, in in the middle of Montana somewhere, and and weary. Probably wasn't the safest thing, but hearing songs and, and, and the songs being different, hearing the words uh, uh, grace and and uh, uh, amazing love. How can it be? You know that, that you, my King, would die for me. Well, I knew that meant the substitutionary death of Christ. I I knew the gospel, and it was so. Uh, great just to hear that and, and to and to know that and so we, we rolled into town just just enough time to grab a shower and get to church and I couldn't wait to get there I it could hardly keep my eyes open because we were so tired and so so uh, road worn but I just wanted the, the chance because we I, each one of us got up to tell what we learned and uh, I probably spoke way more than I should have but uh, got to share the story of the gospel and those four things and and uh, uh, we got home, and uh, I wanted to make sure I had, uh, I think I purchased the books there to make sure when I got home, my kids, we could start going through uh, the same material again so they would know, so they wouldn't have any time in their life where they wouldn't understand the gospel. Um, and I remember uh, just uh, getting into the Word and how it just was just soaking it up, and I couldn't 
get enough of it. Uh, and how before, when I read it, it was it was literally a foreign language. I couldn't, even though I knew it, it didn't mean anything. And now I was reading it with the Holy Spirit guiding me uh, and knowing the truth. And those same verses, the same verses that I was hiding in the closet, trying to convince my wife that she was wrong about. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. I remember uh, she was asleep and waking her up and said, Melissa, do you, can you believe this? Do you understand what this means? And she's like, yep, yep. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to tell you all along. And, uh, you know, I know, I know that I know that I know that that when I leave this world, that my home is in heaven. Uh, and, and I know that because the only thing that could change um, about that would be if Christ suddenly became less perfect and his death wasn't enough to pay for the penalty, the death penalty that I had. And because that's not gonna change, then I'm at peace and God is at peace about me because I'm trusting my eternal destination to the finished work of the cross. And that's not gonna change. Um, so God is at peace about me. And that's, that's, that's a good thing.